The sea is calm today, but when we first started thinking about Prosper, it was clear that the arts were facing some fairly choppy waters. Funding was drying up and a new working model for sustainable practice was going to be required. Taking our inspiration from Shakespeare's The Tempest, where a, a random group of people find themselves washed up on a magical island, we began to discuss how, through working in partnership, we could make wonderful outcomes happen. Working through artistic collaboration was the mission, and so Prosper was born. In June 2012, an open call was put out across East Kent for artists, organisations and commercial enterprises to come forward with their unique ideas for creative collaborations across the sectors, which could explore new ways in which East Kent might thrive. These projects applied for small investments and resulted in 13 experiments taking place involving 39 partners and over 600 active participants. One thing Prosper did was that it gathered um, very different people from across the region. We've got universities, we've got artists, we've got businesses, we've got voluntary organisations, we've got a real range of people who, once that ball was rolling, kind of got pulled into the process. I think Prosper offers something different from other funding streams um, because it not only provides a little bit of funding but it also provides the support, it's a facilitated process so people are supported through the process and also have the opportunity to come together so it's not only about collaborations through people or through organisations coming together and working together but also about the wider Prosper cohort coming together regularly throughout to meet and share their learning. At the end of the experiments the groups were eligible to apply for a larger investment to take their trial through to a full project. After much discussion, five adventures were finally selected to move forward to phase two. We wanted to support everyone, but we couldn't. So we chose five projects that we thought showed a range of artistic work, showed uh, uh, an influence on a range of different communities, and uh, I think we chose the right ones. The first adventure took place in the heart of Canterbury, where young creative makers were offered a platform to showcase and sell their work at a monthly market. One of the aims of our organisation is to help young people make a transition from school and education to the workplace. Um, the market wanted to bring in innovation and new stallholders to the market, and we wanted to find ways of giving young people work experience and business training. So this fitted in with both of those aims. One of the things that we want from this is to try and encourage people to come into the market world because the markets are shrinking like everything else. So if we can encourage new faces, new traders, yes, it works for us too. That's what's really good about this project in particular. You're always learning and adapting to your environment. It's been like a snowball really, going downhill and gathering momentum and gathering size, and it's now moving at speed. <laughs> and a bit terrified. Across the city at the Gulbenkian Theatre, another adventure sees an intergenerational group of people exploring dance and technology. When we first started to work with students, they were terrified of us, absolutely paralysed with fear for about 20 minutes. Mind you, I was a bit frightened. And then, and then they suddenly realised that, well, actually, OK, we, we were old enough to be their grannies and whatever, but actually we were, we were OK at people, really. We weren't too, so scary. And that's, that was lovely when we, we had that well, second or third rehearsal with them, and suddenly it was all just suddenly, lovely. Yes. My name's Pete Wallace and uh, I run a small company called Butchanti that does uh, projection visuals and uh, video mapping for different events. It's been uh, really lovely to, to kind of get to know the ladies that, that in the company over the last few months and uh, it's, it's a departure from our normal commercial work. Excitement is running high for the premiere of More Please, the dance performance that is the culmination of their Prosper adventure. I think the main thing, it allowed us to experiment with a whole number of different ideas around using uh, 
live performance set against mediatised images and a digital environment. So Prosper enabled us in the first instance to experiment with a, a host of different ideas. And then in the second, at the second um, adventure stage, allowed us to actually realise those ideas. Um, our work is focused on older, working with older people. Mm. And specifically we've worked with a company of eight women dancers and that company emerged out of a project that where within which we worked a lot in local residential homes with with people many of whom who had de dementia and late stages of dementia um, and it was using ballroom um, dance and music um, to begin to talk about stories about the importance of dance to people and we transferred those stories to our our company so basically one of the reasons it's important is that we what we're doing is we're giving a platform a national platform to um, to older women in terms of performance um, it's also in terms of the crossover between science and arts we are discovering um, the impact of movement um, and performance um, in terms of uh, physical well-being as well as emotional and mental yep. well-being. Prosper took to the seas over at Whitstable for a third adventure, challenging both sailors and artists alike as they created a unique floating art gallery. seem to have happened by chance. Things just sort of fall into place. We've got the sailors talking about art. The more we talk and widen our networks of people, the more possibilities open up to us. I think it's fantastic. It gives you know, a good, good projection, especially the sort of day like this when we're going down the shoreline. Everybody can see the sails going down. And when, you, when you're sort of close racing as well, it must look quite good from the shore. It breaks down barriers. It gets, you, it gets everybody involved and much more interested than just watching another yacht race, you know. There were people who I describe sometimes as the, uh, the great gorillas in the pack uh, who've been sailing all their lives with white sails with numbers on and they said what is the point of doing something else. Um, actually many of those people have had a conversion on the road to Damascus. They're now some of the great advocates, they think it's fun and it's a way of engaging people in what we do. Yeah, what's been interesting for me about Prosper is, is the range of different people that have been involved and the range of different perspectives they've brought to the work. And it's a complete kaleidoscope of attitudes and experience have all come together. Um, and the way that's joined together to make one coherent project, I think, has been really interesting. Prosper produced some unexpected outcomes on atmosphere and antisocial behaviour when Birdsong and Phaonic Technology adventured to Margate. The project's called Singing Windows, and um, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It makes windows sing using birdsong recordings. I think it's been interesting to work with the different locations on the street, real people, as opposed to arts professionals. It certainly caused a bit of um, intrigue, and you notice people looking around trying to find, uh, find the source of the, um, the noise. Um, we get asked if we've got birds in the shop, which clearly we haven't, but um, yeah, it's a talking point, definitely. I myself haven't got sick of it, which I thought I may have done, considering I'm having it every day. Because it is very, I find it very relaxing and therapeutic. And the final adventure saw an original partnership working imaginatively to engage deal residents with issues of sustainability for both contemporary art and the fishing industry. Prosper for me has been a bit like um, a fairy godmother sort of appearing. Um, I've had these ideas about Deal and uh, um, Prosper has allowed those things to happen. The project with Prosper um, was initially to work with um, a fisherman in Deal. We've repurposed a boat into a two-seater cinema and it's site-specific um, on Warmer Beach. We have done uh, Rise of the Renegade, which was a collaboration with Deal Festival. And we've set up a, a salon event um, on the beach where a, a boat called Julie, um, which is a bit of an icon on the beach, um, uh, became um, the artifact uh, to, for discussion in the salon. From being a fisherman to being involved with artists, it's very interesting. 
it gets you out of the fishing and into the art, the same as the artists come out of their art and into the fishing. But I really, really wanted to paint Nigel's portrait and I hadn't had the guts to go up to him and ask him. And this other artist said, oh, I know somebody who knows Nigel, the fisherman, and it was Katie. So I was introduced to Katie in order to get to Nigel and uh, that's how I met her. The aim of Prosper was to help strengthen cultural resilience and to start the ball rolling for collaborative working across the sectors. During the last 18 months, the Prosper projects have engaged over 27,000 people, attracting additional investment worth £233,000 and led to 13 new funded commissions for Adventure Core collaborators. For me, the Prosper experience is something shared. It's something owned together with other people. And it's been a revelation what can happen if you bring people together with this kind of a structure and this kind of a way of working. It gave people the space to dream and I thought that was a really lovely way to sum up what this process has done. Prosper was very hard work, absolutely thrilling and with incredibly unexpected outcomes. It was the perfect art project.